announcements for this morning uh, on this uh, Sunday in October is uh, we are in need of a lot more candy and uh, little Debbie donations for our fall festival or our fall uh, trick-or-treat bag event. We don't quite know how to call it uh, or what to call it this year. Our drive through treat bag pickup event. Uh, so if you would uh, remember us next time you're in Walmart and uh, pick up another bag of candy, we're trying to do, uh, our goal is to do 2,000 bags, but we realistically, it may only be 1,000, but we're going to do as many as we have items to fill bags with. Uh, so we need your donations for those items. Uh, and Operation Christmas Child is still going around, so if you haven't picked up your shoe box for that yet, uh, there's some located here in the sanctuary as well as downstairs in the fellowship hall. And all the information to pack your shoe boxes is inside here. We're also doing an online shoe box packing event this year, or Operation Christmas Child uh, offers that. So for $25, if you want to just pack one online, uh, for those of you watching at home, you can do that. And it's uh, they let you pick out all your special toys, and the shipping is included in that $25. So those are your options. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yeah, if you'll uh, just go to the website there. Or if you'll just Google uh, Operation or uh, Christmas Child Shoebox Online Packing or something like that, just Google that, and it'll take you to that website. And then you just uh, click on the, you, it says like build now, and you just start start there. And it lets you pick boy, girl, pick what you, it gives you pictures of the, the toys and things. So that's all online that you can do. Uh, but we also have the in-person option as well. And then youth, tonight we have our youth bonfire uh, at the Shields home. Thank you, Shields. Woo! Uh, so youth, that's tonight from 5 to 8 p.m., and it'll be a good time. Their address is on the screen, as well as I'll be sending a remind text with the address of, uh, we're not taking the bus, if you'll just go there individually, and we'll be uh, playing lots of games and bring uh, chips or drinks, or chips or something sweet to share, and we'll see you tonight. We're going to play Capture the Glow Stick, as well as a bunch of other fun games. And parents are welcome to come as well. Uh, Thursdays at 7 p.m., uh, don't forget about Randall's Zoom Bible study. I know that we're back in person, but we're still doing some online things as well. So Randall is still leading the online Bible study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Uh, with David Autry and um, James Hanna, I believe. Uh, so please join Randall on Zoom, and you can send him an email or a text message to get the Zoom login information. And then lastly, Circle 2 has been doing a lot of awesome stuff in the community. And uh, we have some pictures from their last thing, but they recently did backpack uh, blessings uh, bags for the YMCA. So those were some good things. Those pictures are online, and we'll have some pictures in the service for next week. But Circle 2 has been doing a lot of awesome stuff. And then I heard men's breakfast went awesome this morning. So it's good to be all back together. Amen? So those are all of our announcements, and Pastor Randall's going to come with our welcome. Good morning, church. We welcome you if we are with you in person, if we are with you online, if we are with you on WQCH at 1130 a.m., we want to say welcome to one and all. Hear this call to worship. Lord, you have welcomed us saying, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. Lord, you have promised us by being with us in presence that you will go with us and give us rest. Lord, you have blessed us by saying, I will cause all of my goodness to pass in front of you. Lord, you have humbled us by saying to us, I will proclaim my holy name in your presence. Lord, show us your glory this day as we worship you together. What is it that we believe as United Methodist Christians? This is what we believe. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, it's that time of the year again, and I have something very important with me this morning. I have a jar, children, of pumpkin spice. Spice. It's the most important thing of this time of the year, right? Yeah, maybe? No? To some people, and I thought so because if you go in the store, it's in everything, right? Right? I made a list of a, a few things that have pumpkin spice. So, of course, you got, I think, it might have started all with Starbucks and their pumpkin spice lattes, or now there are other pumpkin spice drinks, but now you can get all sorts of pumpkin spice cookies. Did anybody have a pump, pumpkin spice cookie? No, I guess y'all are not big fans of pumpkin spice. No. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, the uh, Cheerios, there's a pumpkin spice Cheerio. Kellogg's makes a frosted pumpkin spice mini wheats. Uh, all sorts of Krispy Kreme uh, or Dunkin' Donuts. All these donut places have a pumpkin spice donut. You can get cream cheese with pumpkin spice. You can get coffee creamer with pumpkin spice. Even a peanut butter with pumpkin spice. Uh, granola bars, bread, yogurts, teas, ice cream pancakes, and I'm sure that you could probably Google pumpkin spice blank and there would be a recipe for it, right? Because everybody this time of the year wants a taste of that pumpkin spice. And so that made me thinking of as we have all this wonderful cold, cool weather and we, you know, have these flavors or these tastes uh, that remind us of fall and these different seasons. In Psalm 34, it says to, for us to taste and see that the Lord is good. So Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be in my mouth. I praise the Lord. Let the suffering listen and rejoice. Magnify the Lord with me. Together, let us lift his name high. Amen? Amen. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to God will shine. Their faces are never ashamed. This suffering person, the suffering person cries out, the Lord listened and saved him from every trouble. On every side, the Lord's messenger protects those who honor God, and he delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. The one who takes refuge in him is truly happy. 
you who are the Lord's holy ones, honor him because those who honor him don't lack a thing. Even strong young lions go without and get hungry. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And here, children, these verses are for you. Uh, Verse 11 says, Come, children, and listen to me. Let me teach you how to honor the Lord. Do you love life? Do you relish the chance to enjoy good things? Then you must keep your tongue from evil and keep your lips from seeking lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Speak peace and go after it. So how can we taste and see that the Lord is good? And it's by us being in God's presence and by turning away from evil and doing good. So maybe that's uh, speaking truth. Maybe that's being kind to someone that you see, showing others the love of God. So my challenge to you this morning, children, is to taste and see the Lord is good and to let everybody else that's looking for some pumpkin spice, let them get a good taste of Jesus by showing his love to them. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love for us and help us to to be a good taste to those that we meet, Lord, that they would see you in our lives and that we would show them kindness and love and that we would speak truth and do good. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Are we not being blessed? Today is a clergy appreciation day, but it's for all persons here in ministry and One of the people who lead us in ministry and who minister to our children and our youth and to us all is Ben Jones. And I think uh, you and I are very Ben blessed to have uh, Ben Jones. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, God loves us through Ben Jones. And we thank God uh, for that hug and for that presence that... uh, Ben shares with us. So thank you, Ben, for all that you do. We now come to the Lord as we pray together. We begin by confessing our sins and by hearing that uh, our sins are forgiven. When we confess, we want to know that our sins are forgiven. Then we intercede for others. And then we pray the Lord's Prayer in our conclusion in our prayer. So would you join me as we go to the Lord and pray? Lord, we know that you will have mercy on whom you will have mercy, for that is what you have said, and that you will have compassion on whom you will have compassion. And this morning we come to confess our sin, casting ourselves on the promised mercy and compassion of God. It is our conviction that the Lord reigns. O majestic God, do we tremble in awe of you. The Lord reigns. O worthy God, have we raised your name in praise? The Lord reigns. Sovereign God, have we executed justice? The Lord reigns. We bow before you, holy God. Forgive us. Cleanse us. Free us in the strong name of Jesus Christ. As the Lord said to Moses, there is a place near me where you may stand upon a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Beloved ones, God has shielded you and me covering our sin with the hand of protection as we hide ourselves in Jesus Christ, who is our rock of salvation. We pause to remember those in our minds and our hearts that we pray for today and during the week. O loving God, you are steadfast forever enfolding even when we cannot accept ourselves. May your spirit empower us to imitate you by receiving those who feel judged and rejected, by walking alongside those who are in despair, by encouraging those who tend to be broken, 
by affirming those who labor in love. We lift into your tender care those whose bodies, minds, and spirits have been weakened or crushed. We lift up to your compassionate grace those whose burdens, guilt, and or fears seem too massive to bear. We lift before your expansive mercy those whose hatred, rage, or vengeance cannot be contained. Receive all these cares, loving God, and fill us with the light of Jesus the Christ our Lord, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We want to thank you for what you do in giving of yourself to this church. And there are many ways that you give yourself. And many times the only thing that we think about is when you give is, is your money. And of course we know that that is important. But there are other things that you give that's a part of yourself. Uh, ben Jones in his announcements mentions those. You give of yourself when you go and you buy a bag of candy. Depending on how much candy we put in these bags and give to people who pass through the port of call and who come in person, that will depend on how much candy we bring. If we want to give them a lot, we bring a lot. If we want to give them a little, we bring a little. We want them to know that if they drive from Rossville or wherever they drive, that they come through, and we want to give them a big hug because we want them to know that we remember them. Whenever people are hungry, and people in this church go to pack bags to give them food. We give them a hug through giving them food. And brothers and sisters, let me assure you that the gospel of Jesus Christ calls us to love those who are not worthy. Not who are worthy. The Pharisees and the Sadducees only loved those who were worthy because they thought that's who God only loved. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ that he came and he ate with tax collectors, prostitutes, United Methodist ministers, Sunday school teachers, zealots, fishermen. He said he has come for the sick, not for the well. And I don't know where you are, but I'm among the sick. I'm broken. That's why I need him. So you offer yourselves to people because you will to love people. Not because they deserve it, but because you and me have received God's love who has willed to love us. You and I do not deserve his love. We are graced by his love and that's how you and I live and that's how we give of ourselves and I just want to thank you for being the kind of people you are you remember each and every day who you are and who you're called to be and when you think of that you mail things to post office box 704 Lafayette Georgia 30728 or you get online and you give your finances or a, a shoebox or you get candy and you bring it to the church, or you pay for food and you get food, or you pack food, or you do something 
to emulate who you believe God is. You just don't do it on Sunday. You do it Sunday to Sunday. You're not Sunday Christians. You are 724 Christians. That's who you are. And I just want to thank you for being the kind of people you are. And I know that this is Pastor Appreciation Month and all of that, but I want you to know how thankful I am to be able to stand here and to be your minister and how proud I am of you because what I have in my life is a result of your love for me and my family. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate it. And one of the things I appreciate more is you love my wife. <laughs> and something I even appreciate more is you love our sons and our daughters and our grandchildren. Your love extends beyond me. And you and I know how we feel about those persons we love. So thank you for all the things that you do because your giving makes us say, praise God. From all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. 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 of the Lord go always with you. May the light of his love shine bright. May the peace of the Lord glow warm within you and go with you from this place. And the peace of the Lord the peace of the Lord and the peace of the Lord goes on and on <coughs> take the peace of the Lord and give it freely to the young, to the rich and poor. Take the peace of the Lord and give it freely, and it will come back to you. And the peace of the Lord goes on and on, and the peace of the peace of the Lord and the peace of the Lord goes on and on. May the peace of the Lord go always with you. May the light of his love shine bright. May the peace of the Lord glow
and the peace of the Lord, and the peace of the Lord goes on and on, goes on and on, on and on. May the peace of the Lord go with you. May we pray. Lord, you uh, love us through this church and into our community so much in the giving of ourselves in so many ways. We experience your love through all people. So now illumine us to hear your word proclaimed that the message of your gospel may come to us in power and it may enable us to live that power out and grace people's lives, that all the things we do, O Lord, may point beyond ourselves to the source of life, who is Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22, we've been hearing uh, three parables uh, this past uh, few Sundays, so now it's Jesus' turn to be approached by some folks, so let's hear what Matthew has to say about this one. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But, isn't that a wonderful word, I think one of our best words in theology is the word but. <laughs> Conjunction, junction, what's your function? But, but Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrite? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Mm -hmm. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. Here ends the gospel. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Pharisees, a word that uh, you and I have come to hate, love to hate, but back then people loved the Pharisees because the Pharisees were holy people. They were people who loved the Lord and they would witness to you. They would quote to you the law. They would quote to you the prophets. They knew what other people said. They were quoters. 
They were adders. They could quote people. Whatever they would tell you about Jesus, they would quote what sages would say. Now, they couldn't give you a personal experience with God. But they could tell you what everybody else says about God. They could tell you what the prophets said. They could tell you what the sages said. They could tell you what they've learned about. But personal, what God means to them personally, God is holy, holy other. So, they go to entrap him. They can't find a way as of yet to get him to do something that they can bring charges on him and, and to get rid of him because, you see, Jesus is a threat to the Pharisees because he's beginning to take people away from them because, you see, he doesn't teach like the Pharisees. He actually talks like he knows what he's talking about. He doesn't teach like the Pharisees. He doesn't quote. He might quote a prophet. He may quote people, but he can talk about what his experience is with God something that people want to hear. He can identify with people. Jesus became incarnate so that he and I, and you and him, can identify with one another. I'm not sure that the Pharisees want to identify with you and me. I'm not sure the Sadducees want to identify with you and me. I don't know that the chief priests and the religious leaders of the people want to identify with you and me. One of the things I learned in pastoral care is you better know how to identify with people. One of the reasons I have lasted so long in the Methodist church, it's coming up on 37, 38 years, is that I know that when I follow somebody that everybody loved, hmm, hmm, you better not go there thinking that everybody's going to love you. You better be careful because they're going to call you the wrong name. Do you know how many people call me John when I got here? <laughs> I would prefer to be called John. I've been called other things. I like to be called John. That's a compliment. And then they'll say, John, oh, I mean Randall. I get it. I get it. You see, I know when I have finally arrived. That's when someone says to me about a suit I have worn three years is that a new outfit you have on? I have finally been seen. Part of the process. Jesus wants us to identify with one another. When I think I'm up here, and I think you're down here, can I identify with But when you and I are here, and that's my mindset, and that's your mindset, we can jihad. That was Jesus. That's why he was a threat. He could identify with people. And that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the religious leaders could not stand about him because he was that kind of charismatic kind of person that drew people. Well, they have an agenda. They're going to entrap him. Good luck with that one. Good luck with entrapping Jesus, guys. So they send, you see, this is what's so cool. This is what's so cool. These Pharisees are so triangulated, it's pathetic. Do they go and do their dirty work? No, they don't. They send their disciples to do their dirty work. What's so interesting is that they do this with John the Baptist. You'll recall that at the Jordan, John was baptizing people, and someone said to him, Hey, John, are you the Messiah? No. Are you the prophet? No. Well, who are you? Tell us so we can go tell those who sent us. Pharisees love to send other people to do their dirty work because then they can be on the outside 
smelling like a rose. But those who are doing the dirty work, they can look like the bad people. We preachers learn triangulation early in ministry. I learned it when someone asked me to order them something from Coatesbury. I know, isn't it crazy? So, stupid me, I got on the phone and I called and I said, hey, I want to order so and so and such and such. Well, a week passed, 10 days passed, and this person called me and said to me, where's my package? You know, like I'm Coatesbury, <laughs> I'm the U.S. Mail, I'm FedEx. I got fed up. Uh, pretty much. And I went to one of my sages and I said, what's going on? And they said, welcome to triangulation, Reverend. And I said, say what? Well, are you Cokesbury? No. Why are you taking orders for him? Are you the U.S. Postal? No. Why are you working for them or pretending you do? If people want to order something from Cokesbury, get them to call, not you. Well, you see, I had it all wrong. You see, I thought if I said yes and I got them something, that would make me look good. Well, just ask the preacher. He'll get it done for you. Isn't that preacher wonderful? Well, you know, it's Pastor's Appreciation Day. I think I'll mail him some because you know I can ask for anything and I don't have to do it. He takes my responsibility away from me. I can be totally dependent on him and he'll just do whatever I ask. I really like him, so I'll mail him a card. I'll go to hell for that. <laughs> oh, I'll go to hell for that. Because you see, I stole from you what God wants to give you. When I encourage others to do for themselves who can do for themselves, God will honor that because that's what God does. God does for us what we can't do for ourselves. Yes, yes. But God doesn't do for us what we can do for ourselves. That takes from us. That doesn't honor us as his creation. So they come to Jesus and they have a question and they use what's called in social psych unconditional positive regard. In other words, they say something really nice to him. Notice what they say to him. Teacher, notice they didn't call him Lord. Teacher, notice they didn't call him Master. They said, teacher. We know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Now, isn't that sweet? Jesus, this is what we think about you. This is who we believe you are. And I mean, if anybody says anything nice to you and me, I'm going to smile and I'm going to say, well, thank you so much. Not that we're being set up. And show difference to no one. Because we know that you do not show partiality to anybody. You treat everyone the same. <laughs> oh, brothers and sisters, you just heard the Pharisees say a mouthful because they're getting ready to experience the very thing that they have just said about the Lord. Tell us, what do you think? What's in your mind? What's your opinion? Should you give taxes to the emperor or not? That's like if I'm sitting on the, uh, on the uh, stand and the counselor comes up to me and says, Pastor, have you stopped beating your wife? Well, shouldn't we first establish whether I beat her or not? <laughs> Shall we start out with that question? You see, because it doesn't matter how you answer that. Yes or no, you're guilty. So this is how they will try and trap him. If he says no, the people will love him and Rome will hate him. If he says yes, Rome will love him and the people will hate him. Gotcha. K. 
catch 22. We've got him now. We've got him entrapped. There's no way out now until he said, do you have a coin? Do you have something on your person that has an image of a God on you? Well, let's see. Well, we just happen to have one. Boom. Gotcha. Because the law says no Jew is to have any graven image of anyone. And there you have an image of a God that you have created on your person. Boom. Now, Jesus says, for those who may not have caught it, whose picture is on the coin? The emperor, Caesar. You see, Caesar is known as the son of God. He's divine. Well, who's asking the question? <laughs> who's asking the question? The son of God asks the Pharisee who's on the coin, and they say, the Son of God. No. The Son of God is the one who's holding the coin, asking you, who's the image on the coin? You don't know, do you? And then he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Do you and I know what belongs to Caesar? Do you and I know what belongs to God? How many times have you and I heard that everything belongs to God? I ask you, who is made in the image of the Almighty God? You and me. Jesus said, give to God what belongs to God. Who molded you? Who molded me? Who shaped you? Who shaped me? Who blew into our nostrils the breath of life and we became a living soul? Who does that relate to? Who does that think of? It's you and me. We were made in the image of God. You and I belong to the Almighty. You and I are to give ourselves to God, not to someone else. And yet you and I live in a world where the world will try and entrap you and me to selling our souls to the world. They will tempt you and me to sell our souls to the company store. I'll never forget Miss Congeniality. Did you ever see the movie Miss Congeniality? Miss Congeniality. It was, um, what was the girl's name who played in that? Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. She was an FBI agent. Do you remember? Do you remember? I want you to remember that part in the movie where he says to her, aren't you the job? Oh, listen to that. Aren't you the job? And she says, yeah, I'm the job. I'm an FBI agent. I'm the job. One of the tricks of the world is to convince you and me that you and I are what we do. But the truth is, you and I are who we are becoming. You and I have been made in the image of God. That's who we are. I am not a preacher. I am Randall, who was called to be a preacher. One day I will retire 
and no one will ever know who I am again. No church will welcome me. No church will move me. I will be a used to be. But there is one who knows who I am, who has said to me, Randall, don't think if you're not preaching a funeral, you're not somebody. Don't think if you're not doing a, a wedding, you're not somebody. Don't think if you're not baptizing somebody, you're not somebody. Don't think if you're not being appointed to a church, you're not somebody. How many people do you and I know that because they can't do what they used to, they don't think they're anybody? But if we will remember that we are the person who's created in the image of God, we are that from conception to the grave. That's good news, brothers and sisters, for you and me to remember because you and I live in a world who wants to steal that. And if you and I will surrender it, there's nothing else to pick up in place of it. Therefore, give unto God what belongs to God. What is that, preacher? That's yourself. That's myself. Today, may you and I give ourselves and all that is of us to the Almighty God. We proclaim that and believe that in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. Brothers and sisters, now go in the image that you are created in, and that is in the image of God and in his likeness, to have a relationship with God, neighbor, and self, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen.